Hey pilots, welcome back. We're doing a little replay review of Nova Tempest's uh, game here in a 262HG2. Uh, before we get too deep into it, uh, sorry this is a day late. I've got uh, my kids home in the summer. We were having a little fun yesterday and didn't get to it, but I'm excited to see uh, how this pans out. As you can see, the 262HG2 is a favorite of Tempest. He enjoys it. I have not watched this. I like to do the replays blind if possible so that I can see the good, the bad, and the ugly comment as we go. And honestly, Nova's a great pilot, so I think more of today what we're going to be looking at is not what, what mistakes did Nova make, but, but really a question of um, you know what did he do right and what can we learn from that. So just really quick off the top of the bat, we've had a quitter on the 1092 who left. Um, don't know why. Uh, two tier nines, two eight. Maybe he had a – could be that he had a – desync or something disconnect and he'll come back we'll see but specialized chain lightnings uh, nova specialized 262 uh, we got a mash on the other side specialized p61 xp 72 interesting uh two nines and an eight against a nine a very overpowered eight and an eight eh, it's about as even as you can get when you got split tiers right so let's see oh and map map wise we've got rocket bases and three garrisons uh this is cold peak trial by fire uh, again, Cold Peak is one of the largest maps in the game. Actually, it takes a while to get where you're going. Um, and, uh, well, I take it back. It may not be the largest, but it's uh, you play it a lot of times at lower tiers. It takes forever to get where you're going. It feels like a very large map, so it may not be the largest. So right off the bat, we're going to knock down some heavy attack aircraft and uh, put them to bed. And the rocket base is halfway done. Not sure what happened there. The XP-58 left, it looks like. Fantastic. So we've got uh, just the 262. So Nova's going to be 1v3, I guess. It's interesting. I have the keyboard up even though I'm not playing today because uh, Nova told me the chat got a little feisty. So we'll have that mostly blocked. Uh, although I'm sure if you want to peek you can but uh, I will not be commenting on it I'm more concerned about the fight up and over on this bot 262 trying to save his bomber which is good that's absolutely the right play and we got the rocket base so question where do you go from here right they've just capped the center they've got a garrison there we've got a garrison so uh, they're a little slow right now. That rocket base should already be capped, right? Even though they're up in points. So I'll be curious to see what the play is from here. You'll notice he's sitting at 17, 1800 meters, and he's going to gain some. He's on that slight incline, so he's at plus five. Just a little incline. He's letting his boost kind of build back up. That's fine. You're cruising at seven, 17, right? Some people will try to push and go a little faster than they need to. Um, you're going to get there in plenty of time. It's not going to save that much time. Just boost it. Oh, this, this is a good conundrum. You have uh, a P61 coming toward, uh, floating away from you, and a BBP and an Antonov further back. That's the Seahawk down there, I think, yeah. And the Antonov is facing to the side. Okay, and these two are kind of facing off this direction. So where do you go? I mean, obviously human pilots are the more dangerous. I'd be tempted to do the two, six, P61. And you've got the rockets, right? So that was easy. Um, and then notice he, he fights the urge to turn, right? Don't get into a turn fight, especially not with a Masha. They're fairly maneuverable. And he's just going to burn through, get some distance, and then about 1,500 meters turn around. That's probably good. The HG2 is very fast, so you need more than uh, 1,000 uh, meters really to get that turn around. And we're going to put the Masha down. And, yeah, the Masha should have been paying attention. They kind of... Thought he was going and he wasn't. Uh, so that's if you're dealing with heavies, just because they leave doesn't mean they're leaving. It means they're resetting for another attack run. Um, this is good horizontal combat too, right? It's not um, 
you know, sometimes up and down is, is when we talk about vertical, but sometimes it's not not quite as much of the dive and climb. It's partial dives and partial climbs, maintaining altitude, I guess you could say. All right, so we've capped this zone. The 61 has come back over there, and he's going to head to the rocket base, which has started to flip. It's interesting, I guess, because all the players are in the middle. So the replay is off a little bit. He's obviously shooting at, at the P61. His rockets are not back yet. They almost are. And then he's just going to leave. Yeah, the P61 is not fast. It is not a fast heavy. If it has one Achilles heel, I hesitate to even call it that. That's what it is. That's interesting. So he goes up and over, but he realizes that, that Hooligan is turned back towards him. And so he pulls him up into the vertical. And, you know, basically he's widening the loop, right? Um, kind of forcing him to come up and bleed speed. And ta it takes longer for the P61 to get to him at that point. So that's probably a good learning if it, if it looks like it's too close, right, to come up a little bit or dive down a little bit. Um, give yourself a little bit of extra space. And, of course, that's not going to be number two. Um, don't go head on with a 262. You're badly, badly outnumbered or outgunned, I guess I should say. So I think now we would probably head to the rocket base now that we've dealt with uh, the biggest issue closely. Bomber, the T-10's priority. I wouldn't. The T-10's out of the zone. So I, I wouldn't call this a mistake necessarily, but I would be... Well, I'd be pounding the Masha first, but he may not have seen him coming in. But I would actually be pounding the JU-88, 288, so. Oof. Lost an engine. And the Masha's is down too. Yeah, again, you can't... This is one of the reasons why I recommend the mod that shows you the bots that I have installed here, which is why you just see the stars. Because um, sometimes it's hard to tell at a glance who the human pilots are, and you have to pay attention to the human pilots. Now, fortunately, um, you know, the other team was able to cap the zone first. So they're, they're in this. And again, we are dealing with a 3v1 here. So that can be problematic. He's staying up high. Again, letting his boost regen. And again, 770, 780, 800. I'd let the boost regen there. We're, not, we're in no hurry, despite the fact that you know, we're down a few points. It's not a critical matter. So, and you want those rockets to come back anyway. He's in a dive here, trying to catch the 250. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's the, yeah, the bomber is moving away. I don't know. I might try to. I would might would have tried to catch the bomber, but either one is fine. As long as you're getting one down and getting those points back. As the oh yeah, and and his somebody's bot crashed. I guess it was their bot. Uh, it was interesting because he didn't get a lot back in the zone, so there must have been a, um, a building that was crashed before the, or taken down before the 1099 was taken down. All right, enemy bomber was in the zone, so that's good. Oh yeah, the rocket base is firing. Duh, that makes sense. That's why his numbers are still shaky despite the kills. Um, and also why I would probably just leave and go back to the rocket base. Like this is kind of a little bit of a losing cause at this point, right? Like they're gonna flip the zone pretty soon here. Ooh, that's scary. Uh, a lot of people will get worried about this. We're 900, we're 800 meters off the ground. I'd be worried about this dive. I assume he's gonna pull out of it okay, but this would make me nervous going straight down like this. So let's see what, let's learn from this. Let's see what the safe distance is uh, that you can pull up at. So he starts pulling up at 700 meters. So 700 meters, you need to pull. And he hit trees and almost a building. So maybe 800 meters is the way to go on that. <laughs> good dive, though, and good recovery. G-suit would help with that, but he's got the um, optics on, which is not a bad choice. The firepower on this is so good. Um, that may be, may be best just to lean into it. Going vertical again. And one more, one or two, you know, one more rocket, and this is going to be... Flipped back there because the bases will reset. So the bases actually reset their ground targets eventually, right? It's it's not going to be uh, um, 
something where you know you just you kill all the bases and then it's over. They do reset. I don't know what the anybody knows what the timer is on the reset. Like how often before the ground targets respawn within a zone? That'd be interesting to know. So what the enemy? What if you're on the enemy team? What should be you be doing right now? You should be taking the other uh, rocket base right over that way. So that's where the XP seventy two should be, um, and the P sixty one. And the masha, like at least you know, at least one of them should be over here. And right now it's just the two bot bombers, because look, there's three three friendly planes over there. So if the P sixty one went over there, shot down those planes, it'd be flipped, and they'd have both the rocket bases, and this would be an entirely different ball game. So uh, just because there's an overpowered up tier aircraft, you know, on the enemy team, you know, you, you don't have to play their battle right. The the name of the game is always going to be capturing sectors. Um, so. One bomber down. Two bombers down. Two down. Now we're at 16K, five bombers, 375 caps, 15 total. So there you go. One of the things that is happening here, though, is because of what the way this is being played by both sides, is it's extending the match, right? Uh, which is good for points, it's good for XP, it's good for cash. So, but it's a tricky thing to uh, make that happen on purpose. I'll have to ask Nova if he was doing it on purpose or not. <laughs> What's he going for? He's gonna, he thought about going for the Masha. Now he's going for it, I would too. I, you know, that's, that's the most dangerous thing in the zone. You wanna protect your bomber if you can. Yep, clear him. Yep, and that 60 points brings the zone back. So this is still kind of anyone's game at this point, right? Just depending on how it goes. You can see you got two ground attackers and maybe the XP-72 are moving back into the rocket base up there in the northeast. He's headed back there as well. Boost cooler just kicked in. That's good. You want to use the boost cooler for, move, for moving from zone to zone. Primarily, secondarily, you can use it as an escape button uh, if your craft is fast enough, uh, kind of as a defensive. But generally speaking, I prefer to use mine on the offensive side of things, moving from zone to zone. We're going to take care of, this is an under underused principle too. There's five aircraft in the zone, right? There's three half, half HP aircraft on the ground. Why not go for those first? Because you want to stay at altitude. Once you go down, you, you burn energy to come back up, right? Take care of the stuff up top first and then go down to the bottom. And then once the sky is clear, you can recover your altitude and energy. If you dive down, you make yourself a target, right? If he goes down low, he's also got to go slow to deal with those things. And then the P-61 might have you or the XP-72 might <clears throat> loop around on you. Who knows what could happen, right? As it is now, like if the XP-72 wants him, he's got to come up and he'll have every advantage when that goes down, uh, when that happens. When it goes down. It's confusing. <laughs> So they do cap the rocket base. There's just enough of them there, right? It's, it was going to happen probably eventually anyway. And uh, the XP-72, kudos to him for choosing the right path and getting over here. Again, we're not, we're not accounting for the presence of the player here, right? I'm not seeing the red team react at all when, uh, you know, Tier 9 pilot, who's already proven by his personal point score and kills, that he knows what he's doing, right? You got to react to that stuff if you're a player on the other team. You got to take that into account. I think one of the things that happens is, uh, particularly on North American server, maybe because the population is lower, is players get in a rut or they get into a thing where they just want to kill bots, get points, do the marathon, and they don't take into account how dynamic the game can be or how a pilot or two pilots can swing the game or change the dynamic and change the pattern of gameplay. And so people sometimes get grumpy when their patterns are dist disturbed, right? Who moved my cheese, et cetera, et cetera. This P-61 is going down again. Um, just shaky, just shaky. I'm not sure. I don't know, I think some pilots, get, the P-61 is so good, they start to think it's invulnerable um, or unbeatable and they make poor decisions in it and um, that's, Definitely the case there. You don't want to go head to head with him. Not sure what he was doing over there anyway. Um, let's 
see. I'm trying to remember what the um, left control. Yeah, okay. Um, it's 22,000 points. Grade one fighter, obviously. Uh, Rocketeer for the one kill. And then we've got Conqueror, Maguire. Uh, that's the heavy heavy point one, yeah. Heavy heavy fighter one. Marseille, 17 targets. Ace, 20 targets. Winged Legend, 15k points. McCampbell, 10 in a single battle of all five types. And the Kozel Dub, uh, five after Squall line. And then some of these secondary medals that are good. Flying Paladin for defense. It's defense, isn't it? Oh, destruction of aerial targets. Interesting. Uh, Guardian capture point. Oh, excuse me. Flying fighter, the grade one. Hero of the sky. And then flying shield. So there you go. Um, we are going to move over now and look at the post-battle results, which he also sent to me. So we'll take a peek at those. If I've done this right. Yep, there we go. So let's look at these. Uh, this is the post-battle screen one, 700 capture points, 25 targets destroyed, nine attack aircraft and bombers. Um, very good. 8,000 pilot experience. That's interesting, that must be a bug. I would think that would be higher. Oh, well, no, I guess not, because uh, I'm thinking, because we had five times fives this past weekend, so my brain has reattuned to times fives. That, that actually does sound about right. So, and then this is the final outcome. You can see the XP-58 who quit 60 seconds in. Uh, this guy quit. I, I'm not sure why, because I'm pretty sure both of these were quitters. I'm not sure why you would quit. Um, so I try not to put people down or demean them here, but, you know, this is the worst possible thing you can do for yourself or the player base, either one. Because um, you cost yourself and you cost the game, right? The match and your teammates. So there are a lot of bots here. And this is another reason I, I like the bot mod. There are bots here, but there are also other human beings playing this game, right? We want to treat them as human beings and not as <laughs> something less than. So uh, Tubby looks like he maybe got some uh, captures there going and Hooligan did fine despite running afoul of Tempest a couple of times and Rocket did fine as well. Yeah, I probably just want to split apart and see if you could run him around, right? Capture the zones, force him to play defensively rather than allowing him to kind of leisurely eat up the map. All enemy aircraft destroyed, so uh, the, sweep, the clean sweep and that's why it didn't get uh, to uh, any higher than 753 there, so. Great match from Nova. Um, things I would take away from this, learning, you know, keep your speed and energy up. You never saw his speed, I think, drop below maybe 600 kph. Um, and you can say, well, that's easy in the 262. And, and yes, I mean, that's part of heavy fighters. But keep your speed up, right? Um, even when you're down low, keep your speed up. Uh, boost through your turns. Make vertical turns where you can uh, rather than horizontal so that even as you're bleeding speed, you're gaining altitude so you retain your energy and get that speed back easily. So maintaining speed is a huge one. Know the strengths of your aircraft. The 262 is a head-on beast, right? Heavy guns. Um, so don't turn fight with people, right? Get the heavies on. And, and the third one, the most important one, I think this is always important. I've seen this twice, I think, on Discord in the last week, you know, where people are like, hmm, what went wrong here? And the answer is not enough captures, right? Like it's always a game of capturing sectors. And the reality is Nova only captured two sectors here. So uh, a team with three enemy pilots on a five sector map should have split up and punished him for that, right? Punished him for, for sticking in the middle as long as he did. Um, that's a little harder to do on a large map like Cold Peak, I get it. But, but that's really still the strategy you want to employ. Um, is split up, you know, make them divide. Because um, there's no way one-on-one -on -one or even three-on-one these aircraft that the pilots had had any shot, right, of beating him. Even if, even if the mash of the P-61 and the XP-72 are all swirling around, the 262 just leaves. Like, there's no way to beat that 1v1. None of these guys are as fast as he is. So the reality is to win, you have to play the game, not the pilot, not the plane, play the game. So that would probably be my biggest advice for anyone here who's watching this video. Play the game. Go cap the zones. Um, do it. Um, you know, this is a, a hybrid PvP-PvE game. You have a little bit of both going on. Uh, and you got to know 
part of the game and part of good piloting in, in the game, being a good pilot is knowing when to PVP and when to PVE, right? When to ca- kill capture zone and when to shoot down enemy aircraft. Um, and so that's the big tip I would give to anyone who's playing this. Congrats to Nova. I know this is another one of his favorite planes. He did the breakdown, the Tempe, uh, Tempest Telestrations, I think, was his big breakdown video with the E3. Or not the E3, just the E, the 109E. I know the 262 is another favorite of his. Hopefully he'll give us another breakdown soon. Um, I think gunnery, and you can see here, the, the guns on this are sometimes hard to use, but obviously he's very good with them. 14,000 damage, right? So hopefully that gunnery video comes along soon. We'll get to see that in action. But uh, but excellent, excellent flying and uh, good game on, on his part. So I uh, hope you all enjoyed this replay review. I have another replay review this week as well. Hunter has sent me one on a lesser flown aircraft. And then I have some more stuff for you as well. So you guys may get four videos this week if you're lucky, maybe four. Um, So we're going to see how that goes. But uh, it's good being back home, good being back in the saddle, making these videos, being able to play the game, hang out with all of y'all. So thank you very much. Uh, Before I leave, I'm only three subscribers, I think, short of 100. So if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, help me out, help me hit 100. Uh, that would be a wonderful celebration for me to have. Um, and go uh, go find some of the other content creators. I found two more today, people making Warplanes videos that are not plugged into the community and not necessarily sharing those videos with a larger community. So um, you know, do a little searching, find the category of Warplanes, type in Warplanes. There's a lot of good content out there. It's just a little harder to find it right now. So uh, go enjoy yourself and also play the game and have fun. So good luck and good hunting, and I will catch you on the next one.